Welcome to Makers International, a podcast of makers from around the world, talking with makers from around the world. Here's Jamie Page, Steve Twidell, Chris Cute, and now your host, Richard Morley. Hello, 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 hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good times, whatever time it is, wherever you're listening. Join with me as always, Mr. Chris Cute. What's up? And Mr. Steve Twidell. Hello, hello, hello. Mr. Jamie Page. You all right? And our very special guest this week is Doc, Doc Hildebrandt. How are you doing, Doc? I am lovely. Thank you for asking. How's everyone doing this evening? I love the way we we try and get like a sort of an almost excited start and then Doc comes on and is like, oh, I'm really good, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, can suck, I can suck all the energy right out of the room. No awesome. problem. <laughs> Ain't no one more chilled than Doc. Absolutely. If you've had an anxious day or week or life, we, we will just sort it all out this evening. Awesome. Um, Got a few uh, few kind of housekeeping, normal, boring things that we do right at the start of the show, Doc, and then we'll be right back with you. So uh, try and try and keep that enthusiasm bolted up because I know it's about to. Burst. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do what I can. I'll sit here coiled like a spring. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> um, cool. So this week's shout outs and thank yous very quickly go to Jim Dockrell, Harnell Media, and our good friend Jurassic Mark, Mark Christopher. How are you all? Um, don't forget, you can also get in touch on all the socials um, where we kind of, well, where Jamie basically uh, frequents to uh, our comments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you want to leave us a comment, get in touch. We do actually like that because it makes us feel like we've got friends other than sort of the four of us, which is <laughs> kind of good. As always, this week's podcast is brought to you in part by Yorkshire Grit, the Woodturner's Abrasive Paste, our good friend Chad over at Mancrafting, Pam from Highland Boxes and also Steve Harneal with Harneal Media. If you want to find out more about these guys and girls, I would highly recommend you do because they're all awesome and their stuff is amazing. Visit our website, makersinternationalpodcast.com forward slash sponsors and all the information's up there because Jamie keeps it all up to date because he's good at stuff like that and, and the rest of us aren't basically. So um, Chris, do we have... <laughs> This is a rhetorical question because I already know the answer. What is our random listener question this week? Yes, we do. And it comes from your better half, which initially got me excited because I thought it was going to be an opportunity to embarrass the crap out of you, Richard. But uh, this is actually need an opportunity. (laughs) Where's my step? This is actually a legitimate question from Hippie Noodle. Hi, Kat. uh, And thanks for asking. Um, She asks, what project have you done and wished that you never would have started? And part two of that question is, and did you see that project through to the end? So the question is, guys, there you go. What project have you started and then gotten into it and then gone, I wish I never would have started this thing. And then did you actually ever finish it or did you just kind of throw it in the trash? So that's the question. Whoever wants to go first. Uh, all right, I'll go first. Um, with, with, you know, I'll let you uh, refrain from laughing until I've actually finished the story. But <laughs> no guarantees, brother. Let's get the question out. We don't get a laugh. <laughs> Basically, the vast majority of the scroll saw projects that I do, mainly the Charles Deering uh, patterns, and it's actually turned into a uh, kind of a running joke between me and Charles Deering. That every time I start one of his patterns, I kind of write a status saying, Charles Deering, I hate you. <laughs> um, but obviously after the 30 hours is up and my feet have stopped hurting and I'm able to stand again, then the pattern is done, the project's finished, and I can smile again. So I hate the fact that I've started it and I'm halfway through it, but I'm glad when it's done. But so you've never started a project and, and not finished it? You've always... No, you've, I've, you've... I've always finished it. All right. All right, what about you, Mr. Twidell? Have you started anything and wished that you had never started it, and then did you finish it? Uh, not really. Um, my problem is I have a million ideas, and uh, I start several projects, and it's not that I don't wish that I didn't start. It's that I wish I had more time to finish all the projects that I start. That's that's more it. I, I've got like an abundance of projects that I've started and half videos and even series that I've started on YouTube and not completed and stuff like that. And just time takes over. And 
I move on to the next thing and then all of a sudden I think, oh, dang, I was doing that. And people yeah. want to see it finished too. And uh, and yeah, so I, I my problem is I just start too much stuff and I've got so many ideas that go buzzing around my head that I've never got enough hours in the day. All right, Richard. Uh, I, I was just going to say, actually, in, in after Jamie's, like, <laughs> so basically every single scroll saw project, I like that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm 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 just leave it that's fine. It's fine, Jamie. It's fine. It's I'm fine. The Charles Deering's patterns. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, every scroll saw project, awesome. Um, and then Steve, I think I think most of us, I, I suffer exactly the same thing. It's it's almost like that sort of attention deficit thing you get really into something and then it's almost like the novelty wears off in a way because you get distracted by another good idea and did you want to do that and then you kind of butterfly between things and then forget the first thing I, i'm totally with you on that in terms of projects from hell that i wish i'd never started i've, I've had a couple and um, they've all all of them have been commissioned so i've had to get through um, and that's what i think i struggle with mostly is the fact that i commit to something and then halfway through go oh god i wish i didn't do this but it, but then having to finish it do you know what i mean there's no yeah you, you can't get around it because you're being paid to do it so you got to get it yeah. done and, and i think <laughs> that's what makes the whole scenario worse because if it was just for me i'd be like no i'm not starting that i don't know just it, it'll be <laughs> fine i can just walk away from that and there's no consequences of course yeah if you've been asked to do it it's a commission i've, I've, I've got it. a half finished grim reaper that's going to be wearing a santa claus outfit at christmas <laughs> oh oh that's right i forgot but the, you know <laughs> that thing is awesome too by the way what about you doc you got anything that you started and just wish you had never even begun uh, and did you finish it uh, i've i've punted projects all the time i <laughs> I I see something shiny. I get started. It doesn't happen as much anymore. Uh, in my, I'm not I'm not such a wily rookie anymore. Uh, so I I tend to see the whole project when I look at something now and not get involved. Uh, you know, but there there was a time where I would buy cars and tools and oh yeah no problem let me take it all apart without writing anything down or documenting where anything goes <laughs> i stripped a motorcycle one time and it was uh i ended up with several boxes of motorcycle there were some <laughs> motorcycle in that box no clue where anything went and it finally you know sold it to somebody as a box project for you know 50 bucks the ton i i can't name them all wow I, I bet that's I bet that's where the whole engine block table ca idea came from because somebody took something apart in their living room and then got bored and just went, yeah. I'll just put the glass on that and that, that, that'll <laughs> yeah. call it. I'm sure that's where that came from. Someone took a uh, had a piece of plywood on top of it, Richard, and then went, you know, if I got some nice glass, well, maybe well, hey. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it may never it may never be a motorcycle again, but damn, that's a nice table. Yeah, uh, I, I actually have a good story about a box of motorcycle bits. Is I very quickly, um, and it was probably an unfinished project too. Uh, there was a guy in Luton in England where I'm from, um, and he was a Harley um, reconditioner. He used to buy Harley Davidsons from around, you know, uh, rebuild them, and then sell them and uh, he bought a box full of Harley Davidson one day off of somebody and uh, he did the usual thing phoning up Harley Davidson to find out you know parts and stuff like that and then he went off to lunch and when he came back from lunch he had like a million phone calls uh, messages on his phone and he phoned them back and they said listen dude go and lift the seat cowling up and have a look under the seat of the bike and when he did that, it said something like, I don't remember the proper words, but it said something like, to, Elvis, uh, to, to Buddy, love Elvis. Oh, you're kidding. No. And he, he sold it at auction for one point something million. And wow. he was so happy. He was so happy he found that unfinished project. <laughs> That's a true story. You can look it up. Yeah. Wow. I can't say I've ever been that lucky. Uh, like ever. Um, wow. Um, 
Uh, Kat, uh, to answer your question, I, yeah, I started a project, and Jamie will laugh when I mention this. And Jamie, I'd appreciate the fact that you would recognize that I didn't laugh at you, okay? Um, but I, I started a segmented chair. Um, it was part of a, somebody's scrap wood project uh, competition or some kind of thing that was going on. And I made, I started, I, I looked at my scrap wood pile and I had a lot of scrap wood. And so I figured, you know what, I could just cut these little bits up, you know, glue them together and just gradually start making a chair from the ground up. And just as I segmented these pieces together, it, I could make it into a chair and, and yeah, no, I got halfway through that and and stopped. And no, I didn't finish it because I absolutely hated it. Uh, it was just a really, it was a good idea to begin with, but I didn't like, unfortunately, like Doc mentioned, I kind of apparently took that rookie uh, uh, <laughs> type approach to it and uh, didn't know what I was getting into when I actually got into it. And I, yeah, and no, that ended up being uh, yard dice. I cut that up and made something else out of it. It ended up becoming yard dice in a different video. So, yeah, um, I have started one. It's the only project I've ever started and never finished, though, by the way, um, was that segmented chair because that just was not a good idea. It's probably uh, probably the designs. You need better ones. I'll, I'll draw you some up. That, oh, Jesus. No, please do me no favors, Jamie. Don't draw me any more designs. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wish I drew some designs for you this week. Oh um, my! Well, you know, well, you know, I didn't want to mention it in the video, but but to but to in defense of Jamie, Jamie was like in the hospital and he was like on quaaludes or something because he was like totally out of his mind when he sent that to me. But I was like, you know what? It'll be funny. I'll do it. Why not? Anyway, so yeah. It, that that question actually kind of vaguely uh, as vaguely because I'm going to try and draw it back to um, to the reason we're here tonight, and that which is obviously Doc. Um, because Doc didn't mention a, a very long-term project that he's part of. Um, one, is it one half or one third of uh, the Scratched podcast? Which I, you, I am one fourth of the Scratched podcast. One, one pod. quarter. Yeah, one quarter of the Scratched podcast. Oh. It's, I, I do apologize. Please do not judge me. Uh, not, will, uh, no, no judgment at all from this side. Could actually be one fifth with Bales? Well, if we count Lenny, it's one sixth. So one sixth. <laughs> your, your involvement here is slowly going down. By the way. Yeah, whatever. That's okay. You, you are a portion of it, but an important. I am. Portion. I am there. So Doc just we, shows up. <laughs> we, we, obviously, we want to talk about the, the podcast in, in depth. Um, I certainly want to know about it because it's not a podcast that I regularly listen to. In fact, I haven't listened to it for a long time. But only because I don't have time really to listen to any podcast. I don't even listen to this one. Once it's done, um, it's it's up to Chris actually. Um, but Red, the Red Smith in the chat, he has asked specifically for you. Um, if the chat hasn't zoomed on, so it's off the screen. What's the best part and the most difficult part of recording the Scratch podcast? He wants to know, and so do I. Uh, all right, I would say the best part is uh, the. the the structure or lack thereof of the scratch podcast is is something that we struggle with because uh, we try to keep it in conversational format and 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 sometimes that doesn't work but sometimes you you're you're talking and you're you you've completely forgotten that you're 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 podcasting i'm just talking to my buddies we're laughing we're carrying on we're having a good time you know, and, and there's there's these those fleeting moments where it's like, man, we're not. I I forgot that I was. You know, we were doing this. I got to watch myself and what I say right here. I could divulge all the family secrets, and, and I wouldn't even. You know, you completely let that down, let that guard down, and and I think that must be what it's like. You know, when you're in a good band and you hit that perfect, you know, perfect sound, but perfect rhythm, and and I, you know. I say this a lot, you know, if life's a golf game, you play for the good shots, and that's the good shots. Uh, I, I can definitely relate to that. I mean, I, I, I personally speaking, um, I'm sure the listeners will completely disagree with this, um, but as, as I've got to know Chris and Jamie, um, I'm still trying to not get to know Steve, um, <laughs> you, you develop a much better long-term relationship, don't you? And like you say, you, you just end up chatting with your mates and I guess potentially there could be a, a pitfall to that. But I, I quite like that approach, the fact that 
we basically don't struck I mean, yeah there's a vague i emphasize a vague structure to you know, we start we talk we finish but that's pretty much about it we just chat away mm. there was uh there, there was actually something that uh you mentioned on um the, the one of the latest episodes of uh, the podcast about um uh, an item uh, was it your grandmother's ring yeah that went, that um, missing did you want to mention that yeah i'll tell that story here it's a, it's it's a crazy story um hey uh cousin paul my cousin paul's in, the, in out there in the chat hi cousin paul what's up Paul? Uh, uh, so hey, cousin paul. we are going to uh my my mom my aunt and my uncle just sold my grandparents house which was like in the family for a couple generations you know i lived there i was the la youngest generation to live i lived there with my grandparents before i moved in with my wife so one, two, three, four, five generations of my family had lived there at one time or another wow so it's been in the family for a while um after my grandmother had passed they took our time cleaning out all the stuff finally the house sold um we are cleaning it out getting down to the nitty-gritty my aunt is walking around you know looking the house down one last time without the furniture in it i will now stop the story and we will cut to about seven years ago seven years ago it was about six months after my grandfather had passed we're sitting in the front room my grandmother looks down and notices that the diamond on her wedding ring is not there one of the prongs in the setting had broken and it, it's not there she doesn't know when she lost it she is devastated so uh i my family uh, my family background italian american these are very very clean people like overly clean people like <laughs> um carpet lines all the time like lines on the carpet from the vacuum like right. you know almost like you know when you see like a baseball field and the guys cut the grass just so like oh grandma did it diagonally today like you know <laughs> so <laughs> so after we noticed that this had happened we started straining through you know as we started cleaning out the vacuum bags we strained it the the uh, the furniture i went through every piece of furniture myself pulled all the cushions stuck my hand down in as far as i could you know what i mean if i could take things apart i did i we shook i, th I blew things out with the air gun we did everything we could we decided about a year after that that you know all we, we, it's gone she may have lost it anywhere could have you know not have been in the house we did all we could so now we'll go back to present day. My aunt is just about to leave the house for the last time. They were about to go to turn the keys over. And, you know, she was kind of feeling like, did I do the right thing selling the house? Should we have kept it in the family? You know, she asks, you know, please, mom, dad, send me a sign. You know, let, let, let us know we did the right thing here. So she turns around, and I guess just the way she turned around, she saw something on the ground, like shined in the light. And my grandmother's diamond was right there on the ground. Wow. So my grandmother, or, or, so, yeah, so my aunt picked it up and left. It was just. Wow. Yeah, it must have been in that couch in the front room because that was like the, literally the last two things to go were like a love seat, full size couch combo. And it must have been just the way they picked it up and, and spun it, or you know. That's, I mean, I, that's yeah, wild. That's, that's wild. Cra that's crazy, right? That's no, very, yeah. That, that'll wake you up. Okay. Well, yeah. that apparently, you know, it, I, I would take that as a sign. Of, yeah, it was. It was good that we sold this place because you know. Yeah. Well, now, it's funny because if you knew my grandma, it was be like, well, it might not be a sign that you did the right thing, but there was no way that she was going to let somebody else have her diamond. Oh. <laughs> 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 so you know there is that you know I, oh too funny so does your aunt still have the diamond and what happened it, to the ring is, well yeah there... my my aunt actually was the one that had the ring without the setting in it so they're uh in the process of uh getting it fixed getting it reset yep. awesome yeah nice. so 
Yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I, t- I gave that I gave that couch where she was sitting a proctological exam. Like, you know, I, I went and cleaned it out as good as I could. So it, however it came out the bottom, I don't know, but it must have been stuck in there good and tight. It wasn't going to give it up until it was leaving. That was awesome. I guess it must have been like, you know, it must have uh, racked out or when they spun it or put, you know, it must have loosened something. But yeah, how about it? That's crazy. It was stuck to the bottom of your auntie's shoe for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been funny if that was some crazy story like that. Yeah, like a, uh, like a stuck fucking tire treads. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out it was stuck to the bottom of the remote the whole time. Oh, that's that's one bit of loose change you don't want to lose down the back of a sofa, isn't it? Yeah, how about it? Yeah, it it, it 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 had happened so long ago. I had put it out of my head that it had happened. So when they called me to tell me that they had found my grandmother's diamond, I was like, "What are you even talking about?" And then like, "Don't you remember?" I was like, "Oh, oh my, oh yeah, wow, yeah, wow." That's just so, did you you say you lived in that house as as a kid with your grandparents? Uh, after n- not not as a kid um i lived down the street from their my parents house but once i got to be of like 22 23 years of age where I, I didn't need to be at home with my parents but at the same time and they had a my grandparents had a big house so i moved in with them uh i assume some of the i don't want to make it out like i was there helping i was there because i didn't have my my crap together enough to go and get an apartment on my own it was like one step out of the house we'll, we'll call it what it is i don't want to you know kill the lily at all there i was there eating all their food but i was cutting the grass and that's what they needed and that's what i needed so it was a, it was it worked out <laughs> it worked out it was an arrangement that worked for both sides that's cool yeah my grand my grandmother needed someone to yell at and i needed somebody to occasionally go buy groceries so I was I wasn't actually home much at that time. I was working, I was working a job with my uh, my dad's best friend, the guy that I call my uncle, and I mean I was I wasn't home very much at all. <laughs> well, that was that was kind of where I was sort of hoping that would take us, um, because I sort of want to find out about Young Doc. Um, when did you get into making and was it sort of from your grandparents or was it from your parents or was it neither? And you just, that, that, it- yeah, that grandfather who's, who we're talking about, um, was an auto mechanic his whole life had, had no other job ever. And he, uh, was a maker of sorts. Uh, when he retired from being an auto mechanic, he, did little word working projects and had a one of them little 16 inch Sears bouncing scroll saws and he'd cut little patterns out. You know, we still have some of that stuff around. He ruined a lot of nice furniture by uh, <laughs> strength strengthening it. He was good at he was good at doing that, taking really cheap like pine trim and putting bumpers on like good good pieces of furniture so stuff didn't like slide off the back. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my dad. Yeah, he <laughs> so, was real, and it didn't just like you know. It wasn't like he did it and put a brad in there. He he nailed, glued, and screwed it on there. It wasn't yeah. coming off. Oh, he did it right. Bed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you could hang on that one piece, but <laughs> yeah. So pop pop was was a maker like that or a handy of sorts. I don't, we're not, you know not a woodworker, and I think I kind of fall in uh, a very very similar. Uh, slot you know i i find myself to be like the maker mechanic style i'm not really a woodworker i have woodworking tools i can make things out of wood but i don't have that knowledge of you know movement of wood or you know i've never taken that time i'm just i'm more of a generalist gotcha and you know um i had an uncle actually i not really my uncle my aunt's married to the guy so i'm not technically blood related to him but he was uh like uh a biker of sorts and he was into a lot of different things he was just really into cooking and that's where i picked up the bug to cook like men cooking like he was the he was the one guy that like cooked old school like that and i i, I took right to that so a lot from him too and he would he's one of those people that Every time I talk to him, he's completely invested into something else. 
Mm-hmm. It's it's always completely off the wall. It's always interesting to talk to him about. I mean, I could be like, hey, man, what's going on? And he could be like, yeah, I'm cutting women's hair now. And I'd be like, oh, man, cool. All right. You know, it doesn't, it, it's just, re- I'm really into this one style of ladies' haircut from Italy. I'd be like, oh, all right. Well, that's, that's what's up. Very good. <laughs> that's what you're into. <laughs> yeah. That's, it, that's awesome, it, man. It's, it's crazy. And I, I think that I picked that up from him. Just, you know, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do, you know. That's why I was talking before about punting projects. If I don't, I don't get overly invested in things for myself. So you can walk, do something else. Well, you don't have to be a master at something to have fun doing it. I mean, it's like, I don't right. care. I mean, if, if any one of you guys want to come to my house and sit down and hand me a pair of scissors, I'll cut your hair. I don't, I don't know if you're going to be happy with what I do, but I'll, I'll be happy to do it. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll get into it for a half an hour and, and move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> kind of reminds me of a, a TV advert that we used to have in the UK that uh, Jamie and, uh, and Steve might remember, but it was, I can't remember exactly, but the, the punchline was um, getting a Lionel Blair haircut. And there was, it was an advert for something and somebody goes in, ask, you know, shows the picture to the, the barber and says, I want a haircut like this. And he goes, oh, a, a Lionel Blair haircut and cuts his hair and it's nothing like the picture. And then that doesn't look anything like Lionel Blair. And he goes, we'll do it if he comes in here. And that was the, <laughs> the, the, the punchline. So yeah. Steve obviously remembers it. But yeah. it, it your, your sort of, your kind of philosophy, I guess, Doc, comes across very much to me um, and correct me if i'm getting the wrong end of the stick here that it's it's much more about the enjoyment and the having the fun of it than the kind of the, the technical finesse or the points why oh, this has got to be right and oh, it's got to be done that way it's it's more about i'm, I'm doing this because i want to enjoy it and if i'm not enjoying it then just like right, kick it and uh, more time more times than not i'm doing things because they have to get done um the the enjoyment is something uh, that that's a dragon i chase every once in a while i i don't do much um fun making these days do you hear these animals upstairs by the way this is great it's like a royal rumble going on up there i do i was like you running chicken fights upstairs or what's going on um, it sounds like my house <laughs> well you know <laughs> something <laughs> it's, it's great <laughs> well, uh, well, well, Doc. We should explain to people that you're actually an electrician by trade, right? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I'm a tradesman. I work with my tools all day. So, yeah, c- coming home and pl- picking up tools for fun is like. My father was a professional photographer, okay, and um, I, I always wanted to learn. You know, maybe it was you know want to look up to dad and be like him kind of thing as a kid. But I always wanted to learn photography. And the last thing he wanted to do when he got home was teach his kid photography. He was like, I've been doing this all friggin' day. Are you kidding me? Let's go use a saw. I want to go make something. So it's like I can totally understand the not really enthused to go out and and use tools for fun because I do this five friggin' days a week for eighty hours. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've, I've recently changed jobs back to I've gone back out into the field to a job I had about eight years ago. So everything is changing again. And I've, I've been working on my house a little bit more lately, uh, that kind of stuff. So the, the making, like I said, it, it's more of have to that, that one. I, I, I've been really kind of hurting, not hurting, but thinking about uh, spinning something on my wood lathe coming up yeah. sometime soon. Right, yeah, but I, I just haven't gotten around to the, the the where and the what and the when, but that that that's coming. Where I'm going to put the heater on in the shop and 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 spend a little time with my headphones on. I just realized. I just realized yeah. the real use for Lenny. Yeah. Do you turn him upside down and go dunk 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 on the roof sometimes? No, no. <laughs> I, if. Um, <laughs> This calm, this calm demeanor drops, and and then I go upstairs and I start laying it down. But <laughs> my wife's upstairs on patrol right now. If she's not uh, calling for me, everything is good. They must be having a good time. <laughs> yeah, it's, t- it's times like that that I'm glad I live in a bungalow. <laughs> no, one's come th- no one's come through the floor yet. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> And by the way, if there's ever a sweeping shortage that uh, that rocks the nation, Doc's the guy to turn to because I mean that, that guy can sweep up freaking anything. Yeah, All right? I'm, I'm a sweeper. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking, uh, speaking about your uh, your shop, Doc, uh, you've probably got arguably one of the best uh, drill presses out there. 
can you uh, can you explain to everyone why I would think that? Uh, I I own a very rare. I guess the head is what's rare. The drill press is like a 1944 Walker Turner drill press, which by itself is cool. Yeah, rock and cool. You know, no holes in the table. It's it's beautiful. Um, but it was outfitted by the people that I bought it from. Well, the people that liquidated it uh, with a quadrille. It was like a multi uh, four headed turret head. So it spins out. So you can actually load four different things into it and change it on the fly. So if I wanted to like counter bore a hole, I could drill the inside, then flip the entire head to a different head with a different drill bit in and then change it. And then, you know, if I wanted to deeper it, I could change it to another one. That sounds like a. That sounds like a machinist drill, or it, something. It, it is the the company, the people I bought it from, uh, made uh, bells. It was a bell casting um, company. That's what they did professionally. So it came from a machine shop. It's not like a wood, because the the fourth head, uh, it's got two half inch chucks on it, Chris, one three eighths chuck on it, and the fourth head is fitted with an auto tap. Uh huh. So. You, it, it takes different collets. You change the collet out, and then you can feed it like a regular like uh, tapered tap in there. And you drill the hole to the proper size, flip it to the auto tap. You pull down on the thing. So when you're pulling down, it's spinning. Uh, the tap. Spinning, yeah, the ca- it's spinning the tap clockwise. But as soon as you pull off on it, it's got a clutch assembly in it. So you can back out, and it'll thread itself out the other way. No, nice. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that... It, when I go out and I, when I have to use it, which I don't use it really enough to to justify having it here, but when I have to use it, like, boop, boop, oh, yep, that's that's how angels do that. That's, that's how. That's, <laughs> that's how the gods have yeah, invented things. Yes, this is what. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's obviously set up for line work. I mean, because there's somebody that's sitting on that thing all day long, pivoting that head, drill mm-hmm. this hole, tap that hole, round it off, count it off. Okay, move it on. Next one, same thing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's set up for production. That's awesome, though. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's it's really neat. It's it's actually was oh I don't know where my phone is, but it's actually the wallpaper on my phone, and it has been for years. Docs drill the head on Docs Docs drill press has been your wallpaper. Yeah, Docs uh, drill press. Well, Jamie, Doc. you need to get out more, buddy. Uh, well, I, yeah, I, yeah no, no, no offense to Doc, but <laughs> Jamie, there's 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 a life waiting for you somewhere that you really should go try to find. <laughs> Hey, I mean, because it is cool, but I mean, uh, let, let's see, let's see it. Just if we click on Jamie, does that? Yeah. The picture, the picture went away. There you go. There it is. That's pretty awesome. Jamie's phone. And for those of you listening to us on SoundCloud and iTunes, yeah, just imagine a four-headed drill press, and you've got it. Or, <laughs> it's, or, it's basically or, the original uh, multi tool. iTunes and SoundCloud come over to YouTube. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how how did you come across something like that then, Doc? I mean, that's that's not a an off the shelf. A friend item. of mine, a friend of mine happened to be in the uh, the right place at the right time. Uh, he was helping these this company clean uh, businesses out. He went into this place. He took a bunch of pictures. And, um, yeah, do you want this? I had to buy another drill press with it to get that one. It was a Craftsman 150. It really broke my heart. I had to sell it, but I didn't have enough money to keep both of them. I kind of overextended myself to buy the buy the two together. So I had to flip the one. The one didn't come off a truck. It went from a truck to another truck right in my driveway. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Why? Well, my buddy was waiting there with cash, so. Hey, that works. Cash is good. Oh yeah, it worked out though. I got it here, and I'm I'm still working on buying all the taps because it was it was a really expensive endeavor to buy all the collets that they go into. I bet. I mean, you say you happen to be in the right place at the right time. Where where is the place? Because you is it Pennsylvania? You're from? Am I right in? Yeah, uh, northeastern PA, for the most part, eastern PA, getting up towards the northern end where it starts getting cold that's me 
and and if you have you always been uh, an electrician in, in those parts or have you had any other uh, not really like uh, make a living jobs i worked at a car wash for a while when i was a young guy uh, i installed appliances when i was in high school uh, I worked for my uncle, who was a general contractor, for about a year and a half. I did some site construction work, you know, digging and whatever. But I, I've never really made a living or had, like, a good job that wasn't electrical work. I did telecommunications, but I, I consider that electrical work. So I, I cut my teeth doing telco work and then moved on to, you know, line voltage stuff. And was that sort of a, a, a career choice? Was it when I mean, we first? Was it a choice? Was it something you did? You, I want to go and do that, or was it something you just it was, to be I, going along? There you end up. That's where I ended up. I uh, I dawdled for a very very long time, trying to figure out and find my way and what I was going to do. Um, I think I, a lot uh, of well, I think a lot of us do that, especially uh, well. And I don't, I don't want to age Doc any more than I have to, but he, he's nowhere near my age. But I mean, I think uh, that no sort of no well, well, uh, no one's that old. <laughs> but that generation of, that, of people that, that, you know, for that 30 year span, let's put it that way, we kind of all found our way and then kind of fell into what we ended up doing. Um, yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't a lot of uh, pressure back in the day for us to go to college and become this. And that's what we did. And that's all we've ever known. I mean, we, I spent time as a, as a freaking professional painter when I was in college uh, for new home construction and things of that nature. So, I mean, and, and I ended up working in radio. So you, you know, dot, dot those, you know, eyes and cross those T's. I mean, how do you go from that to, to this? I mean, it's like, you know, it's just, you kind of fall into what you end up, find up, end up finding to be your life's work and, and you either end up liking it or not. I mean, I, I remember I got into restaurant work, um, as, um, as a kid and then picked it back up later and became a chef. And at no point in time did I ever think I was going to get in that involved in cooking. Um, but I did cause I kind of fell into it and then I fell out of ways with the owner and I ended up going on a different career path cause I didn't want to work in restaurants anymore. So it's like, you know, I don't know. I, I just, I get where you're coming from there, doc. It's like, you know, you kind of fall into something and you stick with it cause you're, you're making the money, you're doing good and you know, you don't hate it. You may not be it's never, never good when you fall into something, when you're cooking, Chris. Well, <laughs> I, I never did that, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not one of those people that um, I work with some of them that it's like their life's ambition to do electrical work. Right. I, I don't see it like that. I, I don't hate it or anything like that. I just saw that that was my in of taking my technical abilities or, you know, my mechanical abilities. We'll call it that. And I had to do something. So it was. I was going to end up doing some sort of professional maintenance. I thought would be good for me, and that's just the trade that I was able to get into, easiest, I guess. So that's what I am. I think there's kind of a, a fine line between, you know, having the sort of. I don't want really to use the whole you know proper job or normal work life cliches but the fine line between having a, a job or career that you absolutely love and it's the only thing you want to do and you, you know you don't do anything else outside of that and having a job where it's it's not what you absolutely are passionate about it's not your reason for breathing but it is the reason you're able to do the thing that you love doing whether it's you know in getting on and your job's all right whatever but it allows you to buy your golf <laughs> you love playing golf or whatever it is so, so. i love the sound effects in the background there's like a, doc you have a great house i can tell you right now oh no, yeah no, that was you, my you, wife <laughs> Pennsylvania. <laughs> I love it. It's uh, like, you know uh, what? Uh, they're having, uh, they're, it, it snowed the other day, so they couldn't go outside at all today. So basically, we had the boys and couldn't run them. So I think she's trying to knock the crap out of them right now. So after dinner, <laughs> that's well. That answers my question. My next question was: You want to be? You're married, right? You got kids. I mean, Ma you're, I, you're I'm married. I uh, married guy. I got two two boys. They're uh, six and two. And uh, and uh, they obviously keep your wife busy. <laughs> yeah, and right now they're exercising the floor joists. <laughs> for, for weak spots. 
which was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, going going back a little while, Doc. Uh, we were talking about um cooking and how you've got a bit of a, a love for it. So uh, I guess what I want to know is, is does Doc have a signature dish? Not really. Um, I I I can cook like your like my grandmother's grandmother. Like I I learned that immigrant style and i can cook things from scratch like italian food all right i'm gonna i'm gonna bet just on the on an off chance bet that doc mates want makes one hell of a lasagna i bet you can probably put together a lasagna that will sit me down for the rest of the evening oh it'll put a hurting on you uh, <laughs> i knew it my, <laughs> Most... my, one of them half sheet pans if i make a half sheet pan of lasagna it, it weighs over 10 pounds <laughs> oh yes yeah yes um, I, I make my own my own pasta. Uh, that's something I really enjoy. Uh, so as well as cooking, I do a lot of stuff with dough, baking, uh, into bread. Uh, I don't do much savory baking, like cookies. Yeah, I don't either. I, I, I make chocolate chip cookies for the boys, but like I, I, I've never really attempted or wanted to make a cake. Be like, oh, let's bake some cakes, but like bread and stuff, I'm into that and that kind of cooking. Nummy, nummy. Main biscuits that too yeah whatever whatever you call it whatever you want to call it it's fine yeah <laughs> i'm just awesome. happy we're eating awesome. oh dear oh dear so you, do you do most of the cooking in your family or do, or you just kind of switch off with your wife and whoever has the time they decide to throw something together or is it mostly happy meals uh, no. <laughs> um, no. I, I i do all the cooking on the weekends and i probably cook two or three nights a week oh awesome um you know my wife is a teacher so she has a full-time job as well and um if she has at different times uh done all the cooking if i'm working on something on the house or working late or taking on another job or whatever but more times than not on the night that she cooks, if I don't have anything that I, I'm actually physically doing, doing right then or have to be doing, I'm going to be up over her shoulder and I'll probably just kind of like tag in and start doing it. So <laughs> um, the things that she does are pretty well defined as her meals. And gotcha. Yeah, it, it's one of those things. I just, I don't know. My, uh, my, my wife does that to me on the weekends because I, co- I, I predominantly cook every night of, of the week for, for my family when my son was here. And now, even now I still do. Uh, but my wife has a habit on the weekends where she's home and she's not doing anything that I'll be in the kitchen. I'll be, she knows what we're having for dinner and she wants to come in and supervise. <laughs> oh man. Hey, you want to get out of cook's nerves? Look over his shoulder. It's like, it's like, get out of my kitchen and get out of here now. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't want to, I don't need that. I don't, I don't, I don't do well with that. No, me either. Uh, <laughs> It's pretty funny though, you know. I I do a lot of cooking. I cook at my parents' house. My you know I cook at my in laws' house. And one time I was over at my in laws and we were doing something like that. And someone came in and questioned what I was doing. And my mother in law ran around to the kitchen. She's like, "Leave Jared alone when he's cooking, or else we're not. We don't need to have a scene, especially." Uh, He's probably been <laughs> drinking wine, so he'll, you know. I was like, "Oh yeah, I'll tell you right where to get off the bus." Here you go. <laughs> I, oh, I could totally relate to that. Yeah, if I, if I if I have my apron on and that towel's over my shoulder, get the hell out of the way. Look, at, look out. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I, I have yeah. to sort of confess in terms of cooking personally. I, I don't. I don't dislike cooking, but I don't enjoy it like some people. I mean, you know, being a, being a chef, Chris, and enjoying your cooking, Doc. Um, I know there's people out there who either are or have been professional chefs, and they absolutely love it. But for me, it's it's like a functional thing. You have to cook in order to eat. You have to eat in order to carry on doing what you want to do. But having met and being with Kat she is an awesome cook and I am more than happy just to stand back and let her cook some amazing stuff when we were on the road trip this year uh, we went and stopped by Al Al's Hack Shack and yep he's another former chef yeah well exactly for anyone that doesn't know Al was basically still is a chef and he he cooks like he 
makes in the hat shack. Mm -hmm. it, I mean that in a good way. Anyway, we're clearing up after tea, um, whatever day it was, and I think we'd had, that's it, he barbecued a chicken. And it, that sounds like a fairly simple thing. It's the most amazing barbecue chicken I've ever tasted in my life. <laughs> You've got to get the recipe. Anyway, so we picked all the bones clean and put them on a plate. And I said to him, you know, where do you want this? And he goes, oh, just put it in the fridge. And I was like, no, 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 the plate with the chicken bones and stuff. Because what I meant was, if you put got it in a the bag fridge. or something to put it in the bin to get rid of it, that's what I meant. And he goes, yeah, yeah, put it, put it in the fridge. I'm like, what are you going to do with those? He goes, oh, I'll, I'll roast them in the oven and then I'll make them into a soup. Make chicken broth, absolutely. Exactly. Well, yeah, make, that's I, how you make stock. I, I didn't know that. I don't cook. I, you know, cooking for me is three minutes in the pinger or read the instructions <laughs> on the back. That's my... <laughs> Um, macaroni and cheese and mix it up and we're good to go <laughs> basically yeah or or you just sit down at the allotted place and you start using the diggers from the outside in until you get to the plate that's that's my knowledge so then al starts no oh, no going through teach teaching me because cat's like yeah 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 you can do all this do all this Let's make this soup we started making chicken soup with the, the chicken bones leftovers because yeah. i've said on the podcast before and, and jared you'll probably be You'll know into this. Cat will make a, a roast chicken for Sunday roast, and then all the leftovers get put into a pie. So she'll make the pastry for a chicken pie on a Tuesday, and with the pastry that's left over, she'll make like little cakes and tarts or whatever, mince pies, yeah. that sort of thing. Because everything that's left over goes into the next thing. Well, yeah. now we're using the chicken bones, and like lunches three times a week is the most amazing chicken soup I've ever tasted in my life. It's just. Well, you know, I, I don't know, and I, Doc probably will concur. Ch uh, cooking and spending some time—if you enjoy, if you enjoy cooking, if you—and a lot of people just need to get into it to find out they enjoy it. But it's 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 a type of making in its own right. I mean, it's just—I yeah, mean, yeah. The, the fact the fact that it's a necessity, you know, of life is one thing. But if you can turn it into a making kind of thing, I mean, I enjoy the hell out of cooking. I really do. I enjoy it because you're actually building something. And when it turns out right. Oh boy, brother, you know it. You know, it's like, oh yeah, that was good. That's oh, yeah. like, you know, for sure. I, 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 yeah, I totally agree with with with, with everyone. Yeah, you know, it is a very similar making mentality and knowledge base. I, mean, I, I enjoy eating first and foremost. Um, <laughs> I I enjoy learning about cooking in terms of. I, I think I'd be quite interested if I stood next to a chef all day and listened to what they had to say about how they do things and why they do particular things and, and stuff like that. The actual standing there and doing the cooking is not, I don't dislike it. I don't find it boring or uninteresting, but I don't get that same level of enjoyment out of it as I do the sort of the knowing why they do, just why oh. they cook the, the bones up and why they do that as opposed to actually doing it. If that gotcha. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't cook either. I'm, I'm not very into cook i find that if i cook i don't want to eat it afterwards that's probably because i'm a really bad cook but um, you know what's my, hunger, it, <laughs> my hunger just disappears but i do a, a lot of baking i'm the baker of the house so i'll bake bread and i'll do uh, sourdoughs and i'll do anything to do with the science of baking i love that stuff but uh cooking no well, it's see, not that's my actually, thing that's actually not that unusual because i mean um, when I'm in the kitchen and I'm cooking and I'm spending like three, four hours m making a meal, by the time that meal is done, I I'm not hungry because uh, I've been I've been yeah. smelling that, all it's, the bits as you put it. In. Well, like, it's oh, not, it's not only that; it's just like, you know I've been smelling it and, and doing it for so long that by the time it sits down to eat it, it's like I'm I'm just I don't I don't I'm not hungry anymore. It's like cooking for Thanksgiving dinner for twelve people. You know, you spend hours in the kitchen doing it, and by the by the time everything's done it's time for you to eat and you go i'm not really not hungry <laughs> it's like, I'm, by, the, I'm by, the by the time it's done i've eaten so many of the raw ingredients who could ever <laughs> <Yeah>. possibly be <laughs> hungry <laughs> if i'm eating if i'm if i'm making lasagna i've eaten half of the thing of mozzarella uh you know <laughs> yeah. probably some other stuff that's that's how i that's how i eat I cook, exactly so. oh yeah. i couldn't possibly slice sli two loaves of bread i've sliced half of one loaf and eaten it while i've been working on <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you find jared when you're like you, you kind of joke about the eating the, the raw ingredients and whatnot that's you know it's all part and parcel of the of the doing it and 
and all the rest of it. But do you find to kind of put it back into the electrical side? Again, we've kind of touched on this already. Um, if you're if you're out installing electrics five days a week and you get home at the weekend, like Chris said with the photography, and your your other half says, "Well, we need a new socket there, or we need that light fitting changed," you're just like, oh, "Just get someone into it. I don't want to. Do, I don't want to know." Do you, do you find that or are you, oh yeah, I've got all the stuff I can do. It. I, sometimes it's hard to motivate myself to work on my own home. Um, lately, I've been in a pretty good headspace of getting it done. I, I think we're going to try to uh, move this spring, try to get a little bit bigger house with a wrestling ring for the boys. See if we can get one that has <laughs> extra floor. <laughs> yeah, something with an extra thick floor or a padded room. <laughs> but uh, yeah, something just just a little bit bigger. So I've been working pretty hard around here, trying to tie up some loose ends and you know do things that I wouldn't normally care about if, if I were staying here. I just button up the house, getting it ready for sale, right? Yeah, and you know winterizing things. If you if you if you're too slow to get ready for winter, you get kind of screwed. So that's yeah, how it goes down. That's me every year. I've been talking about I, I've been talking about insulating my shop for the past five years, and I've yet to do it. And it's and every January, February, I get out there and I go, I need to do this. I really need to do this. <laughs> you know, August rolls around and it just never freaking happens. It's like I don't care. <laughs> I I I think there's a massive correlation between all the types of making, in so much as there is a particular mindset because to me there's there's just too many instances where it can be coincidence you've got like chris and his photography and his cooking and his making and his woodwork and you've got jared with his electrical side and his cooking and the link back to previous generations and whatnot i just noticed in the background there there's a couple of guitars are you are you a musical person as well I so he's just he's trying to eat his tea. No, um, I, I am not like the guitars would suggest. Um, I have a different type played, and I can, but not not well. Not like uh, you've had my buddy Eloy on the show, our friend Eloy. Mm -hmm. Like I can't, I can't just like pick up the guitar, start noodling around, and start singing. I can, I can learn a song and play a song, and I can doodle little bits, but. Uh, it, it's not it's not effortless it's not one of those things i can do without thinking about it See, again i think there's a correlation there with music and and, and making because you know, we don't we don't all make stuff out of wood or stuff out of metal or whatever it is effortlessly you know but there's a desire to want to to be accepting of it's not going to be perfect or i'll do it to that standard because that's the level of enjoyment i get out of it i I just find that there's too much of a, a coincidence there to, for it to not be connected. I think yeah, it is. Else thinks. I for definitely sure. think it is. I mean, uh, and Doc, I don't mind telling you, that's a cool ass bass you have behind you too. That's a five string bass. Yeah. Yeah. Which would suggest I could play it, but that's not the case. <laughs> No, but it's 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 not a usual bass. You don't you don't normally see a lot of five string basses, and that's that's pretty cool. And that's probably why you got it too, right? Yeah, much much like a welder, they'll they'll sell you a five string bass no matter if you can use it or not. <laughs> so sure. uh, you, go. you you can you can buy this stuff. They'll just sell it to you even if you don't know how to use it. So you can have it. It that, that's the easy part. Yeah, you're just like all those YouTube woodworkers, aren't you, with their fancy old fashioned tools in the background, but they never use them. Yep, <laughs> yeah, that's me. Mm -hmm. Just so everyone's clear, that's perfectly acceptable, by the way. Uh, yeah. and, well, and it's probably most likely they probably do use them, they just don't film using them. It's, but you know, whatever, it's okay. Uh, we're getting on, but we're getting on for on time, boys. So, um, we probably got to start thinking about wrapping this up. Anybody got any shout outs they want to do? Yeah, Jamie, go for it. Right, but uh, before I do mine, I've got the old uh, Jamie's page. God, here we go. There's ten minutes gone. Uh, All right, go ahead. <laughs> it, 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 is actually, uh, it is actually quite a quite a big one, and uh, it's uh, the first one is uh, stickers, and it refers to Maker Central coming up. 
Um, now, obviously, Maker Central coming up. There's always uh, a big sticker exchange coming up. And we've managed to get you a discount on your stickers. Um, and on the, uh, the checkout price, you, we, uh, you can get a £20 uh, discount or store credit on um, the checkout price. Awesome. So um, what I'll do um, at the end of the live show, so it will already be on the website and the Facebook page, is I'll put a link to uh, all you've got to do is click the link and it'll take you to the website where you'll automatically receive £20 store credit off the um, checkout price. So, awesome. Yeah, uh, so, send me that link, Jamie, so I can put it in the description when this comes out on Wednesday. Yep. Yeah, okay. No worries. All right. Awesome. That's, that's cool. Right. Good for you, buddy. Um, and uh, the rest of it is uh, is all about the twos for the game. <laughs> so, first, the first one is, is uh, I managed to uh, surpass 2,000 subscribers. Awesome. Um, Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Well done, JP. Way to go, buddy. Our, uh, our good friend and uh, ex-host of the show, Joe Whitaker, passed 20,000 subscribers. So right, well, Joe. Hey. well done, Joe. Uh, Heath Knuckles recently passed 200,000 subscribers. Woohoo! Well done, Heath. Uh, Atta boy. And Mr. Bobby Duke passed 2 million subscribers. Holy moly, oh, that's, um, that's uh, amazing. Who's that? So, uh, well done, Bobby Duke. Well done, Bobby. Uh, what is that Steve like? Some, is, that, is that like some sort of YouTuber, Bobby Duke? Yeah, the, du so, yeah. the Duke and, of Bobby, uh, and that's not even a proper English yeah, title, but and, whatever. Uh, and finally, Steve Twidell probably lost two hundred. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> he got booted, <laughs> which is not unusual for Steve. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, with my shout out, uh, now my shout out. Uh, this week goes to a guy, and I believe he's from Sweden. Um, his name's called uh, Elias Klingval, um, and he does some awesome segmenting work on the lathe, and it's right up on par with uh, Kyle Toth. And he definitely, definitely deserves uh, more subscribers than what he's got now. And he found his channel about maybe a week ago. But, yeah, he, he does some real, real incredible work. Awesome. So, yeah, uh, Elias King, uh, Klingval. All right, link will be in the description. Uh, awesome. Cool, I'll check it out. That's pretty cool. And I I haven't watched that channel, but I saw the link that you said about the segmented stuff, and it got me to thinking about how – I know Steve hates segmented stuff, but I, I'm, I could be tempted back into doing some more segmented stuff. Yeah, it's channel. not my thing. Yeah, it, 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 the, that's the great thing about making. There's so many things that you can use to make stuff with, and ways to do it. And even once you pick one of those, there's so many little kind of avenues. Unless you want to do a chair, yourself. unless yeah, unless you want to do a chair, then don't do it. <laughs> I think I think I went off segmenting when I segmented three million CDs. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> that that will do it. That will do it for sure. So before before I mention my shout out, um, which actually a think is not necessarily a turner but i found him through turning i just want to kind of redress the the sticker thing if i may very quickly jamie because i yeah. don't think you you mentioned it. Um, the the company that jamie's talking about is the company that we all individually use for our own stickers um and also for the the podcast stickers and yes. i also use them for the road trip stickers as well so we can vouch for quality yeah. etc and the ones that we got were actually the kind of the, the cheapest ones that they did as well and they were still good quality stickers so if you wish to improve your stickers by paying a little bit more um then that's obviously your choice yeah yeah they're so really they're really good for putting up in high spots they, <laughs> they take out they take out a tube really well yeah well <laughs> steve took a massive roll of my stickers and was slapping them on everybody's face <laughs> So we know I almost got a few slaps back. <laughs> well, I, well, I was going to say I, I've actually got my sticker on the back of my phone, and it, it is now admittedly looking pretty tatty. But it, that's Shameless got no. Plug. It's well, it's got no coating on it because um, you can, like Jamie said, we got with the cheapy ones. The previous company I used, I had them coated to 
supposedly to be permanent and that started to peel off and the the actual printing was was gone and that obviously lives in my pocket with my keys no loose change obviously because i'm skinned but <laughs> they, they are definitely definitely good quality there um and you know that's that's that but uh, back to what we were actually talking about um shout outs thanks for reminding me steve um my shout out i hope i get this right because i i i was organized this week whoa i know hold the front page um, and i said <laughs> i said chris this what tuesday was it yeah we'll say it was it was really very good. early yeah i'll give you that because um, i knew i'd forget otherwise um so my shout out this week is a guy called mike pickett um on instagram he is not an earl woodworks but he also has a youtube channel which is where i found him um because he does all sorts of little makey bits he does a bit of turning and um this that, and the other and he put me on to a new method of turning slimline pens because i was always put off slimline pens because i think they always look like someone's tied a bootlace around a sausage um too tightly and i didn't really like them but he does a slightly modified version of that which i know isn't new but it's awesome so go and check him out and he's a really nice guy as well so um yeah awesome mr twidell do you have somebody that you would like to give some love to this week besides your oh. uh, doc besides your doctor who prescribed you wonderful medication she she did she's a very good doctor um it was it's cool meds thank you doctor um <laughs> yes i have a shout out um a guy r humphrey um i've only been following him a short while but uh he's been doing some really cool um inlay stuff with bowl turning uh so basically what he does is he takes the blank the bowl blank and he route routes out um designs in the bot in into the blank then he fills that with resin and then he turns a bowl and he turns it so thin down to the bottom that the design then shows through the bottom of the bowl when he's hollowing it out which is a really cool idea and he does some really awesome uh, designs now what i liked about one particular video which is his most recent video uh, it was kind of a puzzle effect he routed out a puzzle in the bottom of a bowl but he wasn't afraid to show his failures and I like that in makers. I like I like it when people actually don't do all the special editing and all that, and they, they actually show their mistakes so others can learn from it. And he he, he said that his, the mistake that he made was using uh, the wrong resin. It was a 30-minute um, fast-drying resin, and it got a lot of bubbles in it. But uh, it still looked like a, an amazing bowl. But uh, check him out, R. Humphrey. Yeah, yeah, very good channel. Got it. Cool. Doc, you got anybody you want to get some love to this week, or you know, just kind of a? Uh, I just want I just want to spread some love all around, send love to you guys and uh, everybody out there in the chat. There you go. Anybody, okay. a, anybody listening? Doc's an equal opportunity lover. Yeah, big, big, <laughs> big lickety wet kiss right in the face. <laughs> from Doc. He's he's the Saint Bernard of wet kisses this yep. week. All right, all right, that's awesome, Richard. I don't have a shout out this week. I haven't had a chance to spend much time with YouTube, so I guess that's pretty much it. Fantastic. Well, we expect two next week then. In that case, there you go. All right, we can do that. Excellent, fantastic. So um, make sure you go and check out the Scratched podcast um, because I'm sure Doc and his crew would appreciate that. I'm going to certainly try and listen to more of those in the future um i don't listen to hardly anyone so don't hold it against me um specifically <laughs> but doc thank you for coming on and thank you for being such a good sport tonight i can honestly say um and i haven't said this for a long time i honestly say i think this is the fastest go moving podcast episode i can remember because when chris said we would be nearly running out of time i i had to double check because i didn't actually believe him to start off with so it's zoomed mm. along tonight so uh huge th thank you to everyone that's been beavering away in the chat and, and busy with us tonight and we, we don't um we don't do patreon obviously well not obviously but we don't anyway um but we might have a little after show thing going on for the people that do stick around for the live thing so uh, i don't know if it if jared's got a few minutes possibly to spare towards the end we don't go on forever but uh, i have to go upstairs and serve my soup there you go <laughs> that's fine that's no problem at all we, we might hang around we might not we don't know i can come back down that's fine 
if you're listening live stay tuned and find out with everyone else but if you are listening to this after uh, the fact on your favorite uh, fruit based tell you what um, i'd like to i'd like to pop in for a second and uh besides scratch podcast i'd like to shout out uh, the other two podcasts that are on our uh podcast network which is our same feed we use the same feed uh we have different shows come up so uh also you can check out trampled underfoot which is eloy Escajedo and mark Lindsay. um they do a good show uh kind of random uh east coast west coast uh different generational thing that's pretty awesome. cool yeah and uh ryan bitters and michael long do another show called hella 90s which is just a, a short podcast like uh where they just talk about something from that era so i wanted to make sure i, I mentioned those guys because they're putting in the work too and um awesome no happy to do it yeah cool so th- thank so you c- can we get something like that put in the shots uh chris yeah i can take care of it for, the, yeah. for those so we can we can check those out. So yeah, awesome. So if I say if you're if you're listening live, stick around afterwards because I don't know what's going to happen. So neither do you. Um, if you're listening <laughs> afterwards on your favourite fruit-based uh, podcast feed, uh, you don't get to listen to that unfortunately because Chris will chop it up at the end. Yes, I um, will. <laughs> so come and listen to us live if you can. Um, if you are still listening, thank you very much. If you're not, we'll say what we like about you. So until next week, we'll have to say to you. To you. Have a great week, everybody. Ouch. Take it easy.